Now, I thought I'd show you a bit of, about the process of taking records and it, putting them into MapMate, which is a recording software, and from which you can create distribution maps, and build distribution maps over a period of years, which is something that we've done, and then ultimately producing a distribution map to go on the website. And we'll be looking at just updating um, a couple of uh, other distribution maps in this instance. But first of all, first thing we need to do is put the records as they come in by via whatever means. I mean, some get some records, individual records sent as an email, which then has to be directly inputted into a spreadsheet file, and then at the end of the year, uploaded and imported into MapMate. Uh, do get quite a few spreadsheet files, but uh, the columns nine times out of ten need sorting out, and the information and data within the spreadsheet file that's been sent in needs sorting out. There is a a downloadable Excel file that's correctly formatted on the, available on the website. As also, there's a moth list, county moth list, including both macro and micro moths, the names, and uh, of which is spelt right. Also got the Bradley and Fletcher numbers and the ABH numbers. And uh, it seems few people know about that. Uh, but anyway, here's a typical left-hand side of the screen is a typical spreadsheet that's been format uh, that's been sent in, and it's totally the wrong format. Now, all I'm interested in, really, and always have been, is creating, is getting enough information just to create a one kilometre grid square on a map. I'm not interested in individual dates in instances like this. And so the record will be standardised. Uh, it will have the recorder's uh, name in it and the determiner's name. Uh, but on the left hand side here in this sort of half of the screen we've got uh, the taxon, we've got the ABH code which for purposes of map mate means nothing and we won't be using. We've got the taxon which is the scientific name, we've got the common name in another column here in column C and then in this instance we've got the number of records, individuals, earliest and latest dates and comments. Now the only column really I'm interested in is column B is the taxon so what we'll do with the taxon here we'll go down to the, the bottom of the taxon and then scroll up copy them out of there and put them into this blank spreadsheet which is formatted in the correct column order for mapmate so we'll paste them in there why everyone uses Calibri, I don't know, I have no idea. And I'll just put them in Arial and then we'll align them to the left. Right, I don't deal with aggregates and there's several aggregates at the top here that we can dispose of. And the rest should be okay. Most times there are numerous spelling mistakes. In fact, there's one there that's entered twice. That I've seen offhand. I mean, we'll go through that at some time. So we have a species listing. What we can do now makes it easier in the end at times in, ca in, in case there are spelling mistakes as we sort them by ABC. So A from the at the top down to Y at the bottom in this instance. Right, so what we need here, all I'm interested in is, is say is a generic uh, sort of data line filling in most of these columns. We need site for MapMate and we need grid reference the vice county number, which we're not even sure, of course, is 56. Recorder, determiner, you can put unknown in them. 
the date you can just put a year and that's all we'll be doing here so it'll be 2020 in there the quantity will be one and the method will be mv light in this instance and that's going to be the same for every record so i'm not doing individual dates in fact i can't on this instance but i haven't got the time to do that so i have in another spreadsheet here done that we don't need that now so we can paste that in there make that eight copy that and then it's a case of putting that same data into there what I do like to do I like to have them centralized and columns G and H with the date and quantity centralized so now it's just a case of copying that block and pasting it in there probably be a couple of hundred species and we work his way down oh, just that bang on so there we are. I can now save that. I'll not save it by that method. Save it this this way. So I click on save. Browse to where I want to save it. And I'll save it in here as book one Excel workbook. So we've now got that saved. Now and I can close those columns up a little bit. Done with the spreadsheet on the left now oh, we don't need to save the changes on that and so this technically now it should it should be ready to import into mapmate but for in order to import a file into mapmate as an excel file you have to save it as a text file tabbed eliminated so We'll copy all this lot, a new workbook on the left here, let's just put that in there, paste that in there, we can close this one, so now all the information is on the left hand side here, so now it's okay to go up to file, save browse and now we need to save it as a text tab delimit delimited file rather and we save it in here and we save it as book one that's the standard file that i use each time to import into mapmate the data changes every time i override the file and click save and yes we want to replace it click yes to that so we can close this in theory and we can close that in theory and we have a nice picture so now we open up the mapmate folder all has gone quite well so far so this is mapmate and i'll open it up as lepidoptera it's great software mapmate it does have some issues especially with newer versions of Adobe but probably won't go into that too much now so we need to import the data so go scroll down to import data from tab text files search for the file we need which is book one there test file now read file file captured okay no problems reported so that's the first bit done right in the second section here is check and resolve content now then there's various fields, there's taxa, recorders, methods, sites, sex, stage and status. The only thing I'm looking at is checking the taxa and this will highlight any species that aren't spelled correctly. So we'll click check. And thankfully everything is spelled correctly. So that's good because that saves a lot of work. There's no need to uncheck reject error. Uh, records with errors so now we can import now click OK and it's already importing the data into mapmate 
and it takes a few seconds import complete done and you click done and yes we want to keep the data so there we are it's all that data is now in map meet so if we go to a species like spectacle that's the distribution map for spectacle uh, if we find something rare uh, uh, let's see what we scroll down let's have a look uh, grey dagger if we compare grey dagger with dark dagger grey dagger fairly widespread dark dagger it's probably equally as widespread but everyone lumps it down as a uh, grey dark dagger aggregate the two are visually identical the caterpillars aren't the caterpillars are easily told apart but no one goes looking for caterpillars and the trouble is with grey dark dagger everyone's assuming that dark dagger is rarer it may indeed be not as common as grey dagger but nobody wants to have to dissect kill and dissect every grey dagger they see just to get dark dagger and quite rightly so really we'll just pick another species in this instance we'll just scroll down and see what we can come to see map mate could be improved by this you've got this menu here and the only way you can scroll down is on the right hand side of the screen whether you can see it on there or not you can't sort of visually scroll up and down by having your cursor within the menu which is a complete pain in the arse to be honest we click uh, redneck footman redneck footman surprising number of records now if we look at silver y so why uh, there's a good example of recorder bias this is the warsop area that Dillison himself recorded Sherwood Forest here this is the Lound gravel pit complex or the Idle Valley Nature Reserve as it is this area is urban Nottingham and the Trent Valley runs up through here we'll just take another species we'll just scroll down and see what we'll come to I'm trying to pick a micro moth you see uh, green carpet will be another widespread moth so if we take a moth like nut tree tussock and that is nut tree tussock and this is the Sherwood Forest area this is Sherwood Forest itself the, the country park area this is up here will be clumber this area down here is, is around about sort of Martin that red bottom square might be Renathy and that uh, feeling might be ransom wood i'm not sure but these two squares are eaten wood and gamston wood so you can see that nut tree tussock is pretty much a sherwood specialist and we'll just do one more uh let's have a look find something yeah, elephant hawk moth. We'll compare the two elephant hawk moths. Now well, that's elephant hawk moth. Widespread, found commonly everywhere. Small elephant hawk moth, which is now increasingly widespread. Not too many records from the Trent Valley, but one or two. And largely, that's the land area. One or two records in land, and mostly it's a heathland species still. But it is increasing away from areas of heathland so anyway once you've imported the data you can then start and do the maps so we'll take the map for small elephant hawk moth and all i need to do now i'm not looking at recreating new maps because there's problems with an old an old software like mapmate a new software like an up-to-date version of adobe and there's a certainly an element of incompatibility when you when you copy and pay copy this map from 
uh, MapMate and paste it directly into Adobe. The squares come out different sizes and any squares are close together or next to each other in MapMate are conjoined when you put them into uh, Adobe. I've tried all sorts, rescaling, resizing and nothing works. There's obviously some incompatibility in the, you know, in the two software and I think it's MapMate because MapMate is a very old software. could really do with completely updating and modernising to make it more compatible with modern software. But ultimately, to create a map, if say we were going to do it, we'll just do with it while we're here. We'll create a new map. So we will copy that map. And then I need to open Adobe Photoshop. I normally have it open, so we'll just open Photo Editor. I'll have a cup of tea while that's doing that. Right, so Adobe is open. We click on new file, new blank file, yeah, and then we paste in the map from MapMate. I don't know if you can see it there, but these squares at the bottom are all joined up. That's smaller square, big square, small square, and some aren't even square. And that's the big problem with MapMate. But if you wanted to create a new map on the website, I don't like the Times New Roman writing at the top. I want to get rid of that. So I would then crop it to 350 by 600 pixels, create a new document, and paste that in there. And then the inner part of Nottinghamshire. I would then fill in as grey and then have to completely go over the squares individually but for the process of what we're looking at here we can close that and this is the process now if I wanted to if I was looking at updating the map for a uh, small element hawk moth and we go Go into the file that has all the moth maps, small elephant hawk moth maps. So this is the present map for small elephant hawk moth that is on the on the website now. So we'll scale that down and we'll shift that over there. And we'll put map mate. We'll have it the map there. So what I have to do now. Well, what I would have to do now is compare this map on the right com compared to the, the new map on the left and then manually put in the new squares in this map. And you can see down the bottom here on the left hand thing there's four squares there which it looks as though that's Cotgrave Forest. At the moment we've got just the one square for Cotgrave Forest so there would be three new squares going there and another square to go there. Lengthy process, there's another new record from there, and one next to there, Goblin Sherwood Forest area, and one over here as well, and a couple in there. So there's quite a few squares to put in, which we'll do manually, and then I'll save that file, and then that file would get uploaded to the website with all the others. And then the next process would be to updating the credits on the web page for Small Elephant Hawk Moth. And that's something for another day. But it gives you an idea of the amount of work. Yes, it might be an old system. And yes, there's some new maps, uh, some new mapping software. But I'm only interested in a simple map. Simple maps are effective. Now people might say, well, we don't know where Nottingham is. Or, and if you don't know where Nottingham is, or any of the major towns in within Ke Nottinghamshire, have a look on a map. It's fairly easy. Nottingham is down here. Warsop is here. Worksop is here. Lound is up here. Retford is over here. 
but Newark is down here. So, do a bit of geography. Can't do everything. This is one thing with, with websites, you find that you're having to almost babysit or nurse people rather than, you know, because I'm going to say, well, I don't know where, I don't know where Mansfield is on a map. Well, learn. It's not difficult with Google, Google Maps and the internet. Can't do everything for everybody. But there we go. That's pretty much how maps are created. And then, you know, put onto the website. Easy, isn't it?